Good day everyone. Welcome to our lecture for today. Our topic is all about applications of functions. So after you have reviewed your topic on functions, so let us now consider its applications. Okay, so applications of functions, for example, uh, we have here the sum of two positive numbers is 100. Let one of the numbers be x and express the product of the two numbers as a function of x. So we have to express the product of two numbers as a function of x. So first we need to uh, let one of the number as our x. Okay, so let x be our one number. And if x is one number, what would be our second number? Okay, if x is one number, what will be our other number? So we're given sum of two positive numbers is 100. So if one number is x, so therefore our other number is simply 100 minus x okay so this is our other number it's 1 minus x uh, sorry 100 minus x all right so we are asked to express the product of two numbers as a function of x. So it means that we have p for our product as a function of x is simply the product of these two numbers. We have x as our one number and our second number is 100 minus x. Okay, and then just distribute x to each of the uh, distribute and multiply right so 100 times x or x times 100 and then we have x times x so therefore we have x times 100 this is 100 times x okay and then you have x times x so that would be x squared Alright, so this is our product as a function of x. So this is equivalent to 100x times, or sorry, minus x squared. Okay, so that's an example of application of functions. So expressing uh, product, in this case, product of two numbers as a function of x. So, ito yung ibig sabihin niya, class. Okay. So, another example, we have a rectangle. Okay, so our problem here, here involves a rectangle. Right, so we know what is a rectangle. So a rectangle has a perimeter of 10 meters and we are asked to express the area of a rectangle. So this is a rectangle, it is an area okay, that is space enclosed with a perimeter. So we are asked to express the area of a rectangle as a function of width which is x. So if this is our length and this is the width of the rectangle, so we can let this be equal to x. Okay, so let uh, w or the width be our x according to the problem.
Alright, so we have to recall some of the uh, basic uh, knowledge of or properties of a rectangle. So we have uh, perimeter. So what is perimeter class? So in this example, we are given. So the given value for the perimeter is equal to 10 meters. So this is 10 meters. And what is perimeter? Can you still remember? So when you speak of perimeter, this is just the total length of the or the total length that enclosed a certain area. So in this case, our geometric figure is a rectangle. So the area, the total length that enclosed this area is what, was, is, what is called a perimeter. Okay, so if this is length, if this is length, this is also length. Okay, if this is uh, width or W, which is equal to X, this is also equal to X. So, therefore, perimeter from the definition, so we have L plus uh, the width, which is equal to X. Then we have another L. Okay, then this L here. Then we have plus another width which is x. So therefore, the perimeter is equal to just uh, sum up no? the, the same uh, term. So we have we have uh, L here. Okay, so we have L and L, so you add the two, so we have two L. Okay, so you have two times L or two L, and then plus we have two X's here, X and X, so you add, that is two X. So this is the perimeter of the rectangle. So, perimeter of the rectangle is 2L plus 2X. Okay, now for the area. So, we know that the area of a rectangle is just the product of the length and the width. So, in this case, in our illustration, we have the length, which is equal to L, multiplied by the width, where the width is equal to X. So, L times X okay because our width is equal to X so let's call this as our equation 1 okay now from this formula So, from this formula for P, or perimeter, okay, so from here, so let's use this, and substitute the value of the perimeter, which is 10 meters. So, we have P, which is 10, equal to 2L, then plus 2X. So, since the area is to be expressed in terms of x, okay, or as a function of x, so we have to express our L in terms of x also, so that when we substitute it here in this equation 1, so we have area as a function of x. So, to do it uh, in this from this equation, uh, let us divide both sides by 2. So, the purpose is to make clear of uh, the coefficient of L. So 10, you divide this by 2, okay, 
right so we have 10 divided by 2 equal to on the right side we have uh, 2L we divide this also by 2 then plus 2X divide this also by 2 So on the left side, we have 10 divided by 2, so we have 5. And on the right side, we have 2 divided by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1 times L, so we have L. Then plus, we have 2x divided by 2 is 1 times x is x. Now solving for L, okay, so solving for L, we have... So you just transpose x to the other side or you have to subtract both sides by x so you can solve for L. So therefore L or say 5 or subtracting both sides by x so we have 5 minus x equal to you have L. L plus x minus x so that is L. So therefore our L is equal to 5 minus x. So let's call this equation as our equation 2. Okay, so this will be our equation 2. And then let's plug in or substitute this equation to our equation 1. Okay, so substituting or substitute 2 in 1. Okay, substitute. So, uh, I'll break ko to class. So, substitute 2, equation 2. In 1. Okay, so we have area equal to, so instead of writing L, L is equal to 5 minus X. So we have 5 minus X, then multiplied by X. Okay, so we have here L times X, so multiplied by X. Okay, so we have area A So distribute and multiply So distribute X So we have X times 5 So we have 5X And then X multiplied by X so minus x squared so therefore we have okay so this is x squared so therefore we have area as a function of x So area as a function of x. So it means something like this. So you write it in this manner. 
area as a function of x is equal to we have 5x minus x squared Okay, so this is our answer. So I hope you understand this one class. So this is a very simple example. Okay, next. We have uh, fencing. Oh, for This is our example for geometric problems. So the first one is also... Uh, related to geometric problems but this time we have a very specific example here for geometric problems so fencing a rectangular coral fencing a rectangular coral so consider a rectangular coral with two partitions as shown below okay so ito yung coral natin class and then these are the partitions then assign letters to the outside dimensions of the coral. Then write an equation expressing the fact that the coral has a total area of 2,500 square feet. Then write an expression for the amount of fencing needed to construct the coral including both partitions. So... Here, first is without this this part here, if you are not going to include this one, uh, we just need to solve for the expression of the amount of the fencing of the coral, only this one. Okay? Now, if we consider this, including both partitions, so you have to consider this, these partitions here. Alright? So, the solution, first we, we will assign letters to represent the dimensions of the coral so something like this okay so we can let this vertical lines as our x and we have here horizontal lines as our y so it doesn't matter class now if you use y here it, it doesn't matter if you use x here for the horizontal that's okay all right now we write the equation expressing the fact that the coral has a total area of 2500 square feet then since the coral is a rectangular or a rectangle with outside dimensions x and y, the area of the coral is represented by area. Now, same as in our previous example, we have area is just the product of the length and the width. So in this case, our length is uh, or our width is x and our width, our length is y. Okay, just the product. It doesn't matter. Uh, whichever is uh, whichever comes first the y or x so in the product that is uh, apply the commutative property of a product okay so now we write an expression for the amount of fencing needed to construct the coral okay so uh, itong parenthesis class uh, so what does it mean So you might be uh, to avoid uh, confusion. So this part here, kaya uh, nilagay to siya sa loob ng parenthesis, ibig sabihin, uh, we can have one problem just solving for the, just the fence without the partition or excluding the partition. Okay? So, uh, we did lang fencing of the coral so without partition but if we include the partition so we have to remove this sign of groupings which is the parenthesis so to determine how much fencing will be needed we add together the length of all the sides of the coral and then you get the answer or if we include the partition so you have to include the calculations for that uh, part the partitions and this is represented by this okay so summing up all the length so this one 
uh, this one represent the yung dalawang x dito this x is the partitions okay so we include the partitions kasi if not included so it will look like this so this is the coral rectangular coral okay and we have here the partitions okay so if this is the length or the width and this is the length for example so this x here that is also the same for here this is also x and of course uh, partitions are also x okay and if this length is y then surely above is also y all right so we have here x this x plus x means plus this one plus x this one and plus x that one and we have y and this y all right so that is our f so our function f and adding all the x's so we have 4x plus 2y so this is our uh, fencing no f stands for the fencing okay so that is equal to 4x plus 2y now for the cost of fencing so let us consider the coral of the last example so in the first example class we are just asked to express now write an equation expressing the fact that the coral has a total area of 2,500 square feet. Write an expression for the amount of fencing needed to construct the coral, both including both partitions. Okay, so this is our uh, expression for the fencing. So we have F for the fencing is 4x plus 2y. Now, when we consider the cost for fencing, so consider a coral of the last example. Suppose the fencing for the boundary of the coral cost ten, ten dollars per foot, and uh, fencing for the inner partition cost eight dollars per foot. Write an expression for the total cost of the fencing. The total cost for the fencing. Okay, so this is the diagram we draw to represent the coral. Alright, so since the boundary of the fence is represented by the red part of the diagram, so boundary of the fence, okay, so this is rectangular, okay, so the red portion of this uh, illustration. So the length of fencing for this portion of the coral is simply x plus x plus y plus y or simply 2x plus 2y. Therefore, the cost of fencing the boundary of the fence is simply 2x plus 2y multiplied by the cost of the fencing per foot. And we know that for the boundary, the cost is just $10. Okay, so that's why we have here multiplied by 10. Okay, so this multiplied by 10, so therefore we have 2x plus, uh, sorry, 20x plus 20y. So this is the cost for the boundary of the fence excluding the partition okay so take note that uh, the two x plus two y here is that the unit is in terms of foot or feet then you when you multiply it by ten dollars per foot so what will happen to the the foot unit so ma cancel na yung or that's equivalent to one of feet divided by feet is one so it's something like this class uh, you have 2x 2x plus 2y so we know that the unit is in terms of feet or foot so ang unit nito is 
this is in terms of feet okay this is feet now when you multiply it by the cost so the cost is ten dollars all right so this is ten dollars per per foot okay so you have foot at the numerator foot at the denominator so this is just equal to one so what is left is simply 2x times 10 so this becomes 2x plus 2y times 10 okay so 2x plus 2y then multiplied by 10 so that's why here we have 2x plus 2y times 10 or this is equivalent to 20x plus 20y so this is the total cost and fencing the boundary okay so any question now if we consider the partition so if you consider the partition so we have another solution here okay so we're given the fencing boundary that is or uh, that costs ten dollars per foot and fencing for the partition that costs ten sorry that's eight dollars sorry class that's uh, eight dollars Okay, so this is uh, eight dollars. So this is eight dollars per foot. Oh, that is for the partition. Okay, and we are required here to uh, find the total cost of fencing. No? Cost of fencing, total cost of fencing, meaning that includes the partition. So from our illustration. As we did uh, in the previous example, so this is the di diagram that you have done. Okay, so I made a color here just to uh, distinguish. No, so I forget to color this one. This should be red. So these are one of the boundaries. Okay. So we have. If we let this be the uh, fencing boundary, let the uh, fencing boundary be FB. So, abbreviate lang natin class FB for fencing boundary. And our FP, meaning fencing partition. So, therefore, so we have the uh, total cost of fencing. We have FB plus FP. Okay? So for our solution, we have uh, for the boundary, so you have to consider x, we have another x here, then plus y, another y here, so that's why we have for the fencing boundary, x plus x plus y plus 2y or equal to 2x plus 2y. And for the fencing partition, fp, so we have this two x and x so that is just x plus x or that is equivalent to 2x all right now for the sum 
So, total cost of fencing, FB plus FP. So, we have 36 plus 36X plus 20Y. So, saan galing yan? Okay, so where this one coming from? Alright, so we have here, we are talking of cost, no? total cost of fencing. So, this is the uh, total length. Okay, this is just total length. So, if you are going to multiply the length by its cost, Okay, so if, if we multiply this by the cost, so we know that the cost for the boundary that is ten feet per uh, ten dollars per feet or per foot, and take note the unit of this is in terms of feet, right? So you multiply this by the cost, which is ten dollars. So this is ten dollars per foot. Okay, so we have here foot and foot. Numerator denominator, so that's equal to 1. Alright. And here, uh, we'll multiply this by the cost of the partition, which is $8. So again, this is also in terms of feet. So 2x feet, then multiplied by the cost, which is $8 per foot. Now this is 8 Per foot. Okay, so again we have feet at the numerator, feet at the denominator. So here we have 2x plus 2y times 10. So this becomes uh, 20. You just multiply 10 to its term. So this will be 20x, right? Then plus, you have 2y times 10, so that is 20y. Alright, so we have here 2x times 8, which is equal to 16x. Okay, so we have to combine all similar terms. Okay, so we have here 16x and we have here 20x. So adding the two because we have the sum, no? FB meaning the fencing of the boundary which is 20x plus 20y. Okay, so that is coming from this part here. And we have for the partition, this is 2x times the cost which is 8, so 2 times 8, 16. Okay, so this is 16x. So you add 20 plus 16, that's why we have 36x, uh, plus 20y. So this is the total cost of fencing. Okay, so that is the calculation class. Okay, so now the unit here is in terms of dollars. Alright, so the unit here is in terms of dollars. Uh, so this is dollar. This is a dollar sign. Uh, 
so the color okay so this is eight dollars okay so that's all for this part so we have now uh, solved problems uh, on cost problems class this an, this is an example of an application of the function in terms of cost so cost uh, problems now for the surface area okay so we have here another example assign letters to the dimensions of geometric box and then determine an expression representing the surface or the lateral area of the box so we assume here that the box is open okay so open at the top so we have only five lateral surface area so one two three four and the bottom the front the right uh, the back the left and the bottom so we have only five okay so first we assign letters to represent the dimensions of the box okay so something like this so we have x y z so if this is x the other side the opposite side is also x all right and this is also y here and this is also z and this is also y this is also x okay so next we now determine an expression for the surface area of the box so note the box has five sides which we call left okay so it's the left side we have the front this front here okay so we have to label this one okay so we have here the left then we have the front so the front natin and then we have the right okay that's the right side natin we have the back not the back and we have the bottom here the bottom Okay, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we have only 5 uh, surfaces. So we will find the area of each side one at a time and then add them up. Or add them all up. Okay, so that's how to, how to solve this problem. Okay, so for the left. So left we have here the Z and we have here the Y. So therefore left the area for the left is simply the product of y and z because this is also y okay this is also y and this is also z so to find the area for the left part so simply multiply the length and the width so that's why we have yz now if you look at the right side uh, right side is just the opposite of the left so therefore we also have the same equation for the area of the right side so we have length times width you know, for the right side also this area okay now for the front so if you look at the front this is our x and length then this is z so therefore front is x times z and for the back so this is the back here this back the back area so this is the length which is x and this is the width so that's why we have xz so this is also xz same as the front now the bottom if you look at the bottom this is x all right and this is the width which is y so x is the length width is equal to y so that's why bottom is equal to x times y okay so adding all up so an expression that represents the surface area of the box is simply yz plus 
yz plus xz plus xz plus xy or uh, just combining similar terms we have here 2yz plus 2yx plus sorry 2yz plus 2xz plus xy so this is the expression that represents the surface area of the box all right So another problem uh, that is cost problem, another cost problem. Okay, so if the daily cost of manufacturing X t-shirts or X number of t-shirts is given by this function. So cost, cost as a function of X equal to 8X plus 100. So we're given the cost function here in manufacturing X number of t-shirts. So daily cost. So this is a cost function. And the revenue obtained is R sub X or R as a function of X, meaning revenue as a function of X is equal to 10X. Then we have to find the daily profit function and also the break even point. Okay, now we should know first ano ibig, sabi, ibig sabihin ng revenue. Ano ibig sabihin ng profit. Ano ibig sabihin ng break even. Okay, so once you know those terms, so you can easily solve problems or cost problems. Okay, so when you speak of revenue, that is the total payment. So, this is our linear modeling. So, revenue equal to the total payment. And this is expressed as Rx. R means revenue as a function of X equal to M times X. Where M is the selling price or what we call marginal revenue. And for the profit, P, so equal to revenue minus the cost, which is C. So when you speak of profit class, you just subtract whatever is the revenue by the cost of doing something or manufacturing something. And when you speak of break even, so it means that there is no profit because the revenue is equal to the cost. So ibig sabihin, yung pagbinta mo ng product or whatever it is, ang nakuha mong pira equivalent lang sa cost ng paggawa ng product na yun. So, revenue equal to cost. So, we have break-even point. Okay. Now, let's have this uh, example. This is for the application of cost, revenue, and profit. Okay. So, an average sale at a small florist or florist shop is $20. So the shop's weekly revenue function is given by R sub X equal to 21X where X is the number of sales in one week. The corresponding weekly cost is given by this uh, function. So, weekly cost, C of X, C sub X equal to 9X plus $800. Now, the questions are the following. What is the florist shop's weekly profit function? B. How much profit is made when sales are at $120 per week? If the profit is $1,000 for a week, what is the revenue for the week? Okay. So, that's it. Now, for the solution. So, for A, since profit is equal to revenue minus cost, then the profit function P sub X would be given by this expression. So, profit as a function of X is equal to the revenue R as a function of X minus the cost C as a function of X. 
So we're given this in our uh, problem. Okay, so given the problem here, we have um, Rx, that is 21x. Okay, and then we're given the cost, which is C sub X, 9x minus 8 or plus $800. Okay, so substituting in this equation or function, we have P sub X equal to R sub X minus C sub X. R revenue as a function of X, C cost as a function of X. So substituting, we have 21x minus the cost function, 9 hundred plus eight hundred oh, sorry nine x plus eight hundred so we have p sub x or profit function of x equal to twenty one x minus nine x minus eight hundred so minus is a class kasi this understood uh, one here the multiply move by negative one so th that becomes negative nine x and the other one uh, becomes negative eight hundred Okay, so profit function therefore is equal to 12x minus 800. Okay, so that is the profit function 12x minus 800. So for B, since x represents the number of sales in a week, now to determine how much profit is made when sales are at 120 per week, we will replace x with. 120 in the profit function and then we will evaluate so our x is 120 so p sub 120 equals 12 x so our x is 120 so minus 800 so therefore our profit uh, when you have x equal to 120 that is equivalent to 640 so therefore when sales at 120 per week profit is $640 for that week okay now for C to determine the revenue for the week when the profit is 1000 for that week we use an equation that contains profit namely the profit function which is p sub x equal to 12x minus 800 now replacing p sub x with 1000 so that's given also in the problem and solve for x so for p sub x equal to 1000 so substituting 1000 here so we have 1000 equal to 12x minus 800 so solving for x so we have x equal to 150 or 150 okay so therefore X is the number of units sold in a week right X is a number is the number of units sold in a week so therefore X the number of units sold in a week is 150 when profit is 1000 1000 dollars all right now to determine the corresponding revenue we replace x with 150 in the revenue functions or function so therefore from this revenue function r sub x equal to 21x substituting the value of x which is 150 so therefore r 150 equal to 21 times 150 or equal to 3000 150 so that's the revenue so you have the revenue you have the cost and you can calculate now the profit so therefore when the profit is 1000 in a week the corresponding revenue is 3150 US dollars or dollars note that in order to determine the desired revenue part in part C we needed to solve for Rx but in order to do that we need to have the value of x to plug into the rx function or revenue function and in order to acquire that value for x we needed to use the given 
formula for the sorry given information which is profit is 1000 okay so that's it for the cost revenue and profit function now our other example so uh, this is my last example i will ask you to do the rest no? we have still about three numbers so continue na lang yung three nya plus so this is our last example for today so the function f sub r gives the cost in cents of constructing a 100 cubic inch cylinder of radius r inches the graph of f sub r is given no? given in this illustration questions what is the cost of constructing a cylinder of radius 6 inches b interpret the fact that the point 3 or the point having the coordinates 3 and 162 is on the graph of the function and c interpret the fact that the points or the point coordinate 3 and 162 is the lowest point on the graph of the function so what does this say in terms of cost revenue or cost versus radius right so if you look at the picture here uh, this is our function graph function where this is our 1 330 this is 3 and 162 this one is 6 270 uh, 6.7 330 so in general the equation of graph is y equal to f sub r so take note this is our r okay so this is the first number of the ordered pair and this is our y so the number 3 here stands for the value for the abscissa which is r and 162 is the ordinate which is y okay so from this given so these are the uh, solution class or well, this is the solution of our of this problem functions and graphs so to determine the cost of constructing a cylinder of radius 6 inches we look on the graph where r is equal to 6 Correspond correspondingly y value will be the cost we are seeking okay so from this graph a red arrow here this arrow is emphasizing the point in which we are interested this point and y and y value of that point is 270 okay so we're talking about this point so therefore the cost of constructing a cylinder of radius r inches is 270 cents or two dollars 2.70 dollars okay so that that is what is meant by this Now, the fact that the point coordinate 3 and 162 is on the graph tell, uh, tells us that the cost to make 100 cubic inch cylinder with a radius as small as 3 inches is 162 cents or 1.62 dollars. Now, for C, the fact that the point coordinate 3 and 162 is the lowest point on the graph tell us or tells us that the least expensive one cubic foot cylinder that can be made is 3 inches cylinder at the cost of 1.62 dollars therefore the 3 inch cylinder is the most cost effective the most cost effective one that is offered okay 
So that's all. And for the rest of this exercises class, uh, just try to do it by yourselves. Or you can group yourselves, among yourselves, do it uh, in your spare time, no? if you still have uh, spare time. And practice solving them. So we have here the first one. The highway department is planning to build a picnic area for motorists along a highway. It is to be a re rectangular with an area of 5,000 square yards and is to be fenced uh, along the tree side, not adjacent to the highway. Express the number of yards of fencing. Uh, fencing required as a function of length of the unfenced size or side. Okay, so we have this problem. Another one is uh, an open box with a square base to be built for forty-eight dollars. So the side of the box will be will cost three dollars per square meter, and the base will cost four dollars per square meter. Express the volume of the box as a function of the length of its side. Okay, so this is a very interesting uh, problem or example. And lastly. We have here the price VT in dollars of eBay stock during 20 week period starting July 1, 20 or 2004 can be approximated by the following functions of time where T is in weeks. Okay, so uh, we have example uh, before that is related to this one. So I hope you can use the concept there and try to solve this. And that's all for today. Thank you very much for listening. And hope you uh, learned something today. And I hope that you can be able to connect now what you have reviewed on functions to uh, what we had uh, discussed for today. Okay. So have a good day, everyone. And please stay safe and healthy always. God bless. Bye-bye.